let's see what happens when I shine my torch onto my solar panel. A question that's often asked is how is information transmitted from one place to another? So for example, if you turn on the radio, you're getting information that's been transmitted via radio waves. If you listen to your phone, answering phone calls and speaking to a friend, then again, you're getting information via, in this case, microwaves. And of course, information can also be sent via optical fibers, so in the form of light. Now, all of those are forms of electromagnetic radiation, but somehow information is encoded on them. Now, what is that? Well, in essence, it is a term called modulation, and that's what the subject of this video is all about. But before I go on and explain modulation, I want to demonstrate it as well. Now, what I have here is a little box that's got a solar panel here and also a speaker. And currently, it's not producing any sound because it's receiving light fairly evenly. In my other hand, I have a phone and I have a torch. And the phone and the torch are connected. So the information from the music that is playing is encoded in the light. You can't see it, but we can actually pick it up. We can transmit it at the speed of light onto my solar panel. Well, maybe some of you know that song. But what is happening here is, is that the information is encoded on my light waves. In other words, it's modulated. And this device here is extracting that information and we say it's demodulated. So what is modulation? Well, stay tuned, let's find out. So now that you've seen a little bit of a demonstration, how I got the sound, that is the signal from my phone onto the light, that information was able to be processed to uh, therefore get some sort of sound out of my speakers. In essence, what's happening is, is that the information is somehow impressed on a carrier wave. Now in the example I showed you just a second ago, the carrier wave was light or the visible light part of the spectrum. And in some way I was able to put information onto that visible light spectrum or those visible light frequencies. And what was able to be occurring was I was able to transfer that information on and then the small box was able to remove that information off. So really there's two pro number of processes going on here. And in essence, what this is, is called is modulation. So adding that information onto the carrier wave is called modulation. And then removing or extracting that information to be therefore transmitted to the speakers is called demodulation. Now, today I'm gonna to be discussing only the analog versions of modulation. That is in specific, we're gonna deal with amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. And there's also phase modulation, which I'm not going to discuss. And then there's also digital modulation, which is a whole section again, and, and not part of this video. This is really about the basics of modulation. So what does modulation actually look like? So what I have here is an oscilloscope that's receiving signals from two sources. I have amplifier one and amplifier two here. And at the moment, they're both putting out 500 hertz. And that's why these two wave patterns are exactly the same. And so what we have here is the distance between them here represents the period. And so therefore, if I change the frequency, we're going to see a change in the pattern. So if, for example, if I have a lower frequency, that means also my period is going to be longer. I'm going to show that because on the top I have the left side and the bottom I have the right side and I'm going to make the right side not 500 hertz but 50 hertz. So straight away you can see here that the period is longer so the frequency is lower and of course it is 50 hertz. If I were to measure the distances between the peaks the distances here would be 10 times that one up the top. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to show you what modulation is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those two waves. That is what we refer to as superposition. And I can simply do this by my 
um, box over here. And I'm going to change that section to adding. And now what you see is we have the information down the bottom as a single, obviously single frequency tone. And it seems to be superimposed on the top. And you can see that the frequency of my carry wave is still the same, but the whole thing is going up and down. And as a result, you can actually see two sets of waves in there. There's the, obviously the uh, wave that we had initially and then we also have, so have the fact that we have this uh, period of these two peaks which matches what we have here in the bottom. Now that is not amplitude modulation. So what I want to do now is I want to show you what amplitude modulation actually looks like. So I can again change the settings here to do amplitude modulation and now what you'll see is is that we still, we don't have a wavy line in the sense of going up and down. We still have a wave, but the amplitude is changed. If you look carefully here, we have the amplitude is a maximum and that corresponds to the peak of this signal here. Where we have a trough or let's say the bottom end of our wave, there we have a amplitude that is weaker. So what we have here is a changing of the amplitude that carries the information of the signal down the bottom. If I were to change the uh, frequency of the bottom wave, and we're gonna do it by simply multiplying this by two, so we're gonna go to 100 hertz. You can see now that the period differences of the original signal is still the same, but the amplitudes actually now fluctuate at a greater rate. And again, it still matches the signal over here. So this is what we refer to as amplitude modulation. Now this, I will say, is a very basic signal. It's a single frequency. So the sounds that you hear from the radio, the sounds of any sorts of more complex uh, sources are going to be a much more complex wave pattern here. But nonetheless, the wave pattern is such that the amplitudes in the carrier wave will match the patterns that are below it. Or in this case, what our signal is here. Let's overlay the two so that we can clearly see how the two are related. So you can clearly see that the carrier wave changes in amplitude and matches the original signal that we apply to it. Now, of course, our source wave has a period and a frequency and by association, the wavelength. And of course, we can determine that on the modulated wave. But of course, our source wave also has an amplitude. Now, there is a limitation here with this box that if I change the amplitude of my source signal, it won't accurately represent what the modulated signal does. So what I want to do is show you an animation that shows you also how changing our source signal amplitude changes the modulated wave. So here you see three waves in this particular animation. The red wave is of course our signal or source wave. The blue one is our carrier wave. And then we have our modulated wave down the bottom. And I'm going to change the frequency in this case here of my carrier wave. And you can see the modulated wave matches that. Similarly, if I change the frequency of my signal or my source wave, you can see that also changes the modulated wave. The point I wanna make here though is how amplitude of the source wave changes the modulated wave. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that if I change the size of my amplitude, you will see that the maximum peak of my modulated wave gets larger and smaller. But the other thing you should notice is that the peak of the minimum also changes. So in low amplitudes, the difference between the maximum and the minimum amplitudes is smaller. So if I have a larger amplitude of my source signal, you can see the maximum amplitude is a lot bigger, but the minimum amplitude is a lot smaller. And so we have a greater difference between the minimum and the maximum amplitude as the amplitude of the original source wave increases. And so that's how the modulated wave encodes the amplitude of our source wave. So as a quick summary, we have a signal here, a modulator takes that signal and uses it to change the amplitude of the carrier wave so that the changes in the amplitude match the pattern of the wave. And so, of course, at the other end, if you receive that signal, you can then have a demodulator, which is able to extract that information to give us back our original wave. And so therefore, it's an easy way of transmitting information. 
like our music with the light, and of course also like listening to your AM radio. But now let's examine frequency modulation. So again I'm going to return this back to 50 Hz, and we have this pattern. But now I'm going to shift this to frequency modulation. Now what you notice now is that the amplitude of my carrier wave does not fluctuate at all. It stays constant. But if you look very carefully, is that the pattern of frequencies, or the periods we could talk about as well, changes in respect to the wave down the bottom. So if you look here at the peak here, is that the frequency is actually a little higher there. Whereas at the bottom of this section here, you'll find that the frequency is a little lower. So you can see a repetitive pattern that matches the pattern down the bottom. And what is happening is the frequency is changed. The frequency is modulated. And so if I now change the frequency of my source signal, let's say 100 hertz, let's see what happens to our frequency pattern. So now you can see more clearly that the pattern is matching the bottom pattern. Now similarly, in terms of frequency modulation, the amplitude is also encoded in the waveform. So you can get both the amplitude and the period, which therefore by association allows us also to work out the wavelength of our source signal. Now I hope that's helped you understand the basics of modulation, in particular obviously amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Now of course, modulation is far more complex than that. Now I've alluded to that, the fact that there are many different types of modulation and that's obviously a much deeper topic to explore. Maybe it's a chance for another video, but certainly it's at a greater complexity. And this video really is meant to be as an introduction to modulation. Now, if you're a science teacher or a really enthusiastic student of physics, you may be wondering where you can get the technologies that are used. Of course, the first one was the light modulator with the to associated torch. And the second is our signal generator over here. Now I'm gonna put a description in below. You can investigate that yourself. I do actually recommend the light modulator. It actually has some great demonstrations, not only modulation, but other demonstrations as well. And I've used it a fair bit in the classroom. Well, I hope that has helped you understand the basics of modulation. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been particularly useful to you. And of course, if you are a regular follower of my channel, maybe consider supporting me via Patreon to help me continue to produce physics videos to a high school level. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care, bye for now.